Well, hello and welcome to the Matchbook Betting Exchange English Derby podcast. Can you believe it? A year has flown by. Myself and the master PL are here to discuss all matters uh, English Greyhound Derby PL. Um, it's that time of year again, uh, obviously busier than normal. We've got 31 heats to look forward to over the next three days. We've got a, a lively anti-post market. And what is this? A couple of English dogs at the top of the market? Surely this can't be right, PL. Have we gone back 15 years? <laughs> yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks it looks a really competitive derby. And, and as you say, there's, there's a lot of quality, I, I think, strength in depth from both sides of the uh, the Irish Sea. So, yeah, it, it, it looks to be a vintage derby, to be fair. Uh, let's hope that uh, we get off to a flyer and um, hopefully we can pick a few winners as well along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, those couple of English dogs we're talking about are both trained by uh, by Liz and Rabag Nair. Uh, of course, King Memphis and Queen Joni both have looked, you know, stunningly fast in their, I'm going to say, relatively short careers. Like, they have a little bit of racing behind them at this stage. Queen Joni, in particular, over the last month, has been nothing short of sensational. King Memphis is the dog with just a great all-round game. PL, when did they first come on your radar? I suppose, like the rest of us, um, they were spoken up well. And, and from the early days, they, they looked very promising. Yeah, and the puppy derby as well, and 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 some of the the, the fact that he can run toaster is is good. Uh, King Memphis, he's just as you say, he's got that good all round quality. There's probably a mistake in him along the way with a misbreak, and you, you know, if you got beat by by Swords Rex, who's, who was probably, you know, he he would come on for the run Swords Rex, but but King Memphis uh, looks a, a quality dog that can break a track record, and of course, Queen Joni as well ha- has broken track record, so. They look. They both look quality. Um, it's just you know, can they do it for for six rounds? That's that's the that's the key to winning a derby, isn't it? Of course, people aren't tuning in to hear me throwing flowers and roses at the English challengers. They want me to talk about the Irish dogs. Uh, we'll leave the English challenge to you. But although you you certainly keep up on the Irish action as well, so you have a strong opinion on the Irish team. Let's just quick take a look at the top of the market at, at the moment. It's in around 16 to 1, both King Memphis and Queen Joni. Um, that'll be the case with the exchanges, maybe even a touch bigger um, near the day. Um, Clonbrine Treaty is next in around 20 to 1. The Laddy Da ranges from around 20, 25, even up to 28 in places. So again, on the exchange, that should be in around 28. And thereafter, you have the likes of Ben's Teddy, Superfast Gordon, the other Kobe, uh, Lynx Maverick, who's the next of the uh, big UK contingent with Romeo Command, of course, runner up last year. Uh, King Capaldi is also there, um, a kennel companion to both Queen Joni and King Memphis. He's got blistering early speed, probably the best of the uh, English in terms of early speed. Well, certainly from the McNair kennel, Lynx Maverick can really race to a corner. JT Craze is there um, at 33 to 1 for Paul Hennessy. Wiki Ned, Barntick Bear, Swords Rex, King Combs, some very fast greyhounds um, and high trend. I'm just going to put in there again at around 40 to 1 mark. But um, from an Irish point of view, Paul, I, I said this the other evening at the preview. I'm not sure we have a team captain. I think we have a lot of very, very fast greyhounds from very well established greyhounds. My fear with our established greyhounds is that they are getting a bit long in the tooth. You know, their hair color is more York than mine, to be honest. A little yeah, bit of grey in yeah. there. Um, but at the same time, our sheer numbers, uh, when I say our and talking about the Irish challenge, has to be, has to be taken into account. Like when it comes down to the last 28 or 24, should I say, like I'd be suspecting the Irish will have 15, 16. Yeah, you could be right. I mean, and you are right. It is a very, very strong derby. And I think you you kind of touched on it there. And, and, and Lorraine says this to me a lot. It's not, ju- it's not just the dog. It's having the man at the end of the lead that knows how to prepare a derby winner. It's six rounds. It's, you, you don't win the derby in the first two rounds. Um, so that that is going to be a key. It, it's um, We've got a, a couple of young handlers as well that are, that are coming to prominence. Um, but when you look at uh, the likes of Pat Buckley's uh, won, won a, an English derby recently. Graham Holland's won the last two. Paul Hennessy's won a couple of, of recent derbies, albeit one at at Nottingham and one at at Wimbledon, um, it, they they are they are going to be you know there as you say at the business end and they've come a lot of them have come with strong teams but of course we've got Patrick Yanzers who won with Thorn Falcon in in twenty one so Patrick's got a good team that you know, Mark Wallace has got a good team Black, R- Rab and, and Liz they're, they're the same so. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be down to not just the dog. It's gonna be down to the handlers as well. 
Yeah, no, it is. It's it's a war of attrition, you know, six rounds. Um, yeah. um, let, let's talk about those, a couple of those at the top of the market. We'll, we'll spend a few minutes on the anti-post market, and then we might move in, just glance through the heats. It's, you know, it's obviously 31 heats. We're not going to be talking about 31 of them. We won't even be talking about 13 of them. We'll probably talk about five or six of them, really, one or two you want to pick out. I'll pick yeah. out a couple as well. Uh, Queen Joni, um, you know... King Memphis was favoured all the way along. Now, there are places where she is favoured. Um, I, I think she's a sensationally fast bitch. My fear is that the runs she's been doing over the last month and a half, I'd like to see her doing them a month from now. And I fear that maybe she's peaked too soon or, or maybe she's run herself into peak fitness too soon. Um, it's a case of also, you know, hoping that Mother Nature stays away. Often when a bitch runs into this type of form, yeah. is running so, so well... It's a sign that, you know, nature is knocking. And, and that could be the case. He doesn't suppress his pitches. And if Queen Joni came into season after a week or two, you know, her backers will be sick. Yeah, indeed. You know, that, that's always that's always the, the, the little bit of you have to take into consideration. But, I mean, the fact that she can break track records um, is, you know, it, it's, it just shows her ability. And that's the quality. But it's, it's one day, will she make a mistake? Will she... Will she keep going from from in behind dogs? That that's that's what you ha you have to factor in, and of course, as you say, nature as well. So, yeah, there is that to it. Um, I, I actually haven't got. I think m the most of my selections um, for for anti post wise that they are they are Irish trained, and I'm a big believer in, as I mentioned earlier on, about you know the person uh, and the handler that's that's training the dog knows how to train a Derby winner. So, it's not, I'm not saying that. You know, uh, Ravelis can't train a Derby winner, but they haven't as yet. So I've got that reticence about those sort of dogs. Can they do it from from behind? Um, they're they're superbly fast greyhounds. I mean, and the fact that they're bred them themselves is is you know a, again a testament to to their setup. To to be fair to them, and they've won they've won some comp big competitions with them. But there's a difference between winning a four round comp and a six round comp, and and that takes some doing. Yeah, no question about it. And and even then, some of them aren't even four round comps in the UK. That I suppose our dogs are, are used to the the longer format competitions yeah. and whatnot, and, and maybe that stands to them. And more to the point, I think our trainers are more used to the the longer format. Um, you know, you've seen even the likes of Peter Crohn's coming over. He hasn't even trialed his dogs there. No. Now that is a big concern. Now, oh, yes, yeah, Tracy Junior has been around the block. He's handled every track he's gone to. Mister Chelm was runner up there in the past as a right, and Rapido Bob though have never been around. So it'd be very interesting to see how they handle play. Um, King Memphis, I suppose the similar similar scenario with King Memphis as Queen Joni. You're, you're talking about maybe a little mistake at traps. He, he he does have a tendency to miss it every now and again. He has great all round pace. We know he can do it off the off the speed. But just again, the six weeks is is the just a, a little concern. Yeah, that 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 would be it. And and as you say, it's not like he's he's not like he's a, a six to one, eight to one favorite going in, into this. It, it, it's he's, he's at the top of the market. Because he's a fast animal, he could he could he can do a 28, 70, 80 easily, but you've yeah. still got to do that in with with five other other race dogs, and that that's the key. And yeah, he, he did as I say, he made a mistake just the other week and saw Drex beat him, and I would say saw Drex is massively undercooked. You know, he, yeah, he hasn't he hadn't raced yeah. uh, since November prior to that, so you know, it, yeah, uh, it's it's an intriguing derby. It, Ian, you know, we we're, we're going to try and talk about this for thirty minutes. We've got start get moving because there's plenty of other dogs with big chances uh let's 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 go through them as a group then uh Clumbrine treaty Jaladi, da ben's teddy Superfast gordon um super fast gordon for me looked a really talented greyhound around the turn of the year he's still a very 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 talented greyhound but just one or two little mistakes have happened in recent times and i just get the impression that there's probably one or two with better chances from from pat's kennel including ben's teddy obviously he took a nasty tumble in the easter cup but he's come back he's he's trialed okay and and, and touch wood he's well in himself he's a very hard dog to knock out of the frame he could be one for each way value the laddie dam on record is saying i think he's an absolute monster um problem is we haven't seen an awful lot of him since sort of the back end of last year if he was the same dog he was last october i'd be backing with single figures but he's not um or he hasn't shown us that he is confirmed he hasn't confirmed it as yet so we'll we'll keep an eye um, I, I'd be very keen to watch him in that opening round. And if I thought he'd showed any bit of sparkle, I'd be getting involved. Um, and Clambrine Treaty. Clambrine Treaty is a dog who has won three classics. You know, he's won a Ledger. He's won an Easter Cup. And, of course, he won the Kirby Memorial as a, as a young greyhound. Um, looked 
for me, always like a Shelton Park dog, but yet never really seemed to run Shelton Park great until this year's Easter Cup final. He's won twice around Limerick. And I've always said that I've found that dogs that run Limerick tend to run toaster. Um, that could be the case. If he takes to the place, he is going to be a wide seed, Paul. And it's worth minding that a wide seed with his draw every night in toaster can be a powerful thing. Uh, I, no doubt. And I, that he's he's about the, the fourth bet I've had is Clumbrian Treaty because of, because of that fact. I actually uh, that I listened to you when you said he's won three classics, and I thought this this dog is quality. And again, Graham Holland trains him. Uh, he knows how to train a Derby winner at Toast. He, he was he was also beaten favourite in the Project Stakes final, so it could have been four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but it, it's it's quite his quality, isn't he? And you're right. He's going to keep getting his draw. He's already been round there. He acts round Toaster. Um, I'm I'm sure that he'll be prepared, and that there'll be more to come. And Graham. And Nicky will eke a, a bit more out of him as well. So um, he, he's a dog that I've that, that I've put into into my list of bets, and and I think he, he'll go he'll go very very close and very very deep in the competition. You mentioned the two other dogs, uh, Delardi Dar. I knew you were sweetening him because we had a conversation probably a couple of months ago. And Lorraine pointed out super fast Gordon to me. I didn't really know too much about him. I spoke to James Gordon at, at the Sheffield Sales earlier in the year. And he mentioned him and I was big on my first bet was Ben's Teddy um, because I thought I missed the boat. Actually, I, again, before Race of Post TV uh, folded, um, I I thought 50 was a big price. And I was thinking, how can I get on at 50? And then all of a sudden, crash bang, one up. And I think the owners stepped in and backed him. I got a bit of 40s and 33s about him. But super fast Gordon won in Tralee. Again, he was shown on Race of Post TV. I thought this dog can this can, I went back through his form and I see he'd, he'd matched paces with Delardy Dar. I thought with well, Fortune thinks that Delardy Dar could win an English Derby. I'm sure this fella can match him. And I and I backed him at, at forties again. Got chopped. I couldn't get as much as I wanted on. But even so, he, he's he's a, he was a bigger price when I backed him than he is now. So you're right. A couple of things have gone wrong for him. But again, Pat's probably just took reined him back a little bit. Just give him that little bit of time to freshen him up. And now he'll go in probably just slightly underprepared and he'll hopefully, I think, progress throughout the derby. And again, all those dogs that we mentioned there, they are capable of getting to a toaster derby final. Yeah, you, you, we mentioned it. We were spoken about it in the last few minutes about, as you said, the undercooked element of things. A lot of their leading hopes, be it Buckley's or, or Dowling's, haven't been overly raced of late. Um, you know, they're, they know what six weeks in toaster be it traveling you know the track itself the long run to the escape they know exactly what it means and, and what it what it takes and i i see that as a good thing and i suppose that's encouraging for me as regards to the laddie that because liam has never been shy to run his dogs and the fact that we've seen so little of him you'd be hoping he, he's not saying there's any problems right like that he said listen he ran off the second bend in this trial and I, he said i'm putting it down to you know the time down to that um but you know, the fact that he's undercooked and yes, they're going to have to negotiate the opening round or two. But if they do, you know, all of a sudden run themselves into form. We know the quality is there. This unbelievable quality. Speaking of quality, uh, the other Kobe has to get a mention. Last time we saw him in action was obviously that Derby trial. But prior to that was winning the Irish Derby. A surprise um, return from retirement. He'd been at stud duties. And here he is in a Derby with Graham Holland on the lead. You know, that, that game was the great shock. But... You know, he handled the track great in his in his trial stake, running from trap five, edging inwards as you'd expect from him. He's in three in the opening round. If he got one of his flyers, this is the dog that's more than capable of doing a, a 28-70 around toaster. Uh, no dangers. And I, I think you highlighted a little snippet on, on, on Twitter and I, I picked something straight away and I contacted you. And I I did get a little bit of 180 as well. And obviously he's another one that's... So he, he he's, uh, he's in the bag as well as a as a, a dog to, to be with. And the fact that he can go and win an Irish derby and then go with Jennifer and then go to Graham Holland and, uh, again, a man that knows how to win an English derby, and he's won the last two, he's a massive player. He's just got such a big engine and he's got all sorts of, uh, of speed as well. So, so yeah, and, and he looks like he's got a, a, a pretty straightforward task in the first round. And, again, when a dog's been off that long, Ian, and I know he's had a trial stakes and he looked good there, you just you, you just want him to get that clear run, no issues, and just keep progressing throughout the derby. And I think he looks a, a, do a dog with a big, powerful engine that will go deep. Yeah, well, let's, let's hope that he is the same dog he was last year. And just race through a few more. Lynx Maverick, we, we haven't really spoken about. You know, 
there's definitely a difference in views, like he's 16s and 20s in places, all the way up to sort of 28 in places. Um, you know, that's around the price he is in the exchange links. Maverick, a dog with blistering early speed, has had his few niggles. They were planned to bring him to Ireland this year for a crack at the, I think it was the Gold Cup. Um, didn't happen. Again, it picked up a small problem. We haven't seen an awful lot of him, but a dog with huge ability. What about the 500 metres? Yeah, well, that was that was always when Lynx Maverick is everything that I love in a greyhound. Blistering early pace, not not always a, a a smash breaker, but just once his feet touch the ground, he just roars into the bend. And I've always been a big big fan of him. We did um a Twitter Spaces last night. Billy uh, hosted a Twitter Spaces last night, and Tom came on, and uh, and he's a man I've got a real a lot of time for Tom. A young a young handler that wants to wants to go places and is really trying hard. And he, he's got some decent dogs in, in his kennel as well. And, and obviously, this is the star of his kennel. I think you're right. I think re- reading between the lines, he's probably ever had a few problems with him. He went missing for a little bit, didn't he? And I, I don't know whether he's actually come back with the same awesome early speed. But you know what? I think he's staying better, Ian. I do. I do think he's staying better. Now, whether he can do that over the six rounds was always my issue when I first saw him as a greyhound. I thought he is Derby class pace. But is he really a toaster dog? So I've got the same sort of reticence. I, I don't. It's not easy to strike a line through him, but you you can't keep going with with betting this, betting that at sixteen and twenty. So he, he's one that I do respect. Um, I do think he's staying better. I think he's probably lost a little bit of that explosive early, but he's staying better, which is going to stand him in good stead for a derby campaign. Yeah, it certainly will. Um... We, we can't go through them all, as you say, um, but we haven't mentioned Swords Rex, who, who is likely way. Well, we have mentioned him, but, but briefly in passing, it was just great to see him back to winning ways. Again, the age is an issue for me, but there's not all that many miles in the clock, and his, his trials take back, as you said, looking undercooked, but at the same time, looking very, very similar to last year. He went unbeat through the competition. Obviously, things went wrong in the final, but can't be completely dismissed. No, I didn't think, again, I didn't think he showed awesome early pace. He got a, a fairly decent break. He showed good enough uh, pace to get to the front. I think he's better than that. I just think he's better than that. I think the fact that he's, again, come in and not had a race for a long, long while, Graham, Graham would be relieved, I would imagine, uh, that he he got to the front without any issues and got a clear passage. I can see him breaking much better than that as well, Ian. You know, he's got a real real top quality bingo break start in him. And then he once his feet touch the ground, he's another one that just absolutely flies. And it's interesting, actually, it just picks up on that. You've said a lot, oh, he's got a bit of age about him. He's got a bit of age about him. There's there's a lot of dogs that have probably got a bit of age about him, but they're all quality. And I think that's just the, t- the tone of this year's derby. That That's what I think. There's, there's I mean, there, there could easily be some some younger greyhounds with with limited form burst on, onto the derby scene in the, in the first round. But again, it's that, can they do it for six rounds? And we know that Swords Rex can. Yeah, can they do it in the cold Tuesday evening in Stoke is what you're saying. Um, Paul, um, rather than going down through them, pick pick us out your three or four. Yeah, I've, I've got probably four for you. I, I've mentioned already Ben's Teddy was the first dog. I, I listened to actually Lofty, I think, on Tuesday, said he wanted to take him on. But when I saw him uh, in in the – is it the Puppy Derby? Was he in the Puppy Derby in, in Shelburne, Ian? Um, and – He's one of those it's dogs. A that, while back now. <laughs> yeah, it was well, a while it wasn't back. This year it was it was, it was 2022. Yeah, if he it was, was it, yeah. it was, yeah. And then he was. Well, he's one of those dogs. He, he's not. He's not got explosive early, but every now and again he can start and he could, he'll hold his pitch to the turn. But he's just got that all good all round speed. He's a far, again a fast grand that can do a, a 2870 with a with a clear run. And I just think he's a good competition dog. So I actually think he will be suited to Toaster. I think um, he's proved himself. He's won at, he won at Lifford. He's, he's won at uh, 575. He's won 600. He's, he's just one of those. You, you need to be able to keep going week after week after week to get those, to that, that final. And I think he will. So I put him in. Again, master trainer, uh, Pat Buckley, staying at June and, and Tony Harvey. So... Uh, always a big plus because they, they know what, what they're doing there. I put Super Vast Gordon in. I said I'm a little bit reticent about him now, the same as you, but I'd, I'd love to see him go smash in the in the opening round and then prove he's back. The other Kobe, uh, again, at a big price, and I put Clumbrian Treaty in as well. So that they are my four. 
<laughs> you weren't wrong about Irish tea. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. It's not. You're not exactly. flying the Union Jack no, anyway. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm using. I use those, boy. I I I don't use that. So, yeah. so um, I'm not I, saying. You know, again, you you could keep going because that the, there are a lot of quality dogs. But you've asked me for four, and and they're my four. Yeah, when you have to try and cover, you know, like I, I'm in that sort of position where I'd, I'd love to see an Irish winner, but I'd, I'd hate to see an Irish winner that I'm not on. And you're trying to cover all bases, but just like as we stand here, there's 48 still there Irish grain greyhounds. And you're after mentioning four, and any one of them would be a, a perfectly sound anti post bet. I like you had a little nibble on the other Colby at 100 to one. I just thought it was was far too big at the time. Obviously, he's considerably shorter now, but there's still 25, 28 out there for a dog who's proven in the Derby. You know that has to be still representing value consider that you know he, he's 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 won a lot more than the dogs in front of him um one i've thrown in is boil sports bob um obviously you know he's a hugely hugely fast greyhound the fact that he will be seeded um should be getting his draw most nights you know paul hennessy has a habit of finding this type of dog keeping him lightly raced the fact he's only had one or two runs this year is purposeful you know this dog or big part we had a few runs in the easter cup got to the final um he, he may just lack a yard early but i'll tell you one thing he's a massive massive engine and just the prices he's available you know really does appeal to me um if if i was looking at something towards the top of the market again i'd be i'd be keen on maybe having something on clambrine treaty in case he really takes to the place um, he'd be another one I'd like to watch in brief, but in terms of picking my 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 number one choice would certainly certainly be the laddie da. I, I'm willing to take a chance that he will handle the place, that he will return to the sort of form we saw last year. Like this, is the greyhound that came from behind Drippy's flight line to win in 2778 in Shelburne Park. You know, it was up there with one of the greatest runs I ever saw. I, I was blown away by it. And I genuinely feel if this dog finds his trapping boots in Toaster, and, and that could be an issue with, you know, different mechanism and whatnot. But if he does, I'm genuinely not sure there's any any dog faster than him in training. Um, so Delady to have my number one choice. And just a couple of others at very, very big prices. Rushy Meadows, I've mentioned, for the top bitch market in places. But do you know what? You could do worse than about 101, 125 to one. Have a small few each way in there. Um, she's one of only two runners left for Brenda Matthews with Merit's inclusion, who I'm also a huge fan of. But just his, he he's, has that sort of 10. Be, he's still quite green, even though he's had that 10, 12 races. He was second in the Kirby Memorial. Be very interested to see how he handles Trap 1 in the opening round. But Rush, Rushy Meadows, I think she has everything. I really do think she has everything. She's lightly raced. She's open to all sorts of improvements still. And she has a 28-10 or 28-12 run around Limerick. You know, that sort of run would suggest she's more than capable of going through a derby. But there are so, so many more we could mention. It's one of those derbies, Paul. It'll only start to take shape in about three weeks' time. You know, and, and by then we could be we could be skint and our anti-post <laughs> bets could be gone. But uh, Jeremy, you know, you're, you're pretty good, actually. Your, your, your anti-post selections on these podcasts have been really good. I'm, you're Rushy Meadows. I'm going to raise you sing along Dolly for a, for a, a big price outsider as well. A, a competition dog that she could keep. She could keep qualifying as well. And I like her actually in the opening round. So very strong. And and she's taking on Boy Sports Bob in the opening round to a point yeah. where I'm not sure which one. The three qualifiers. Though, I'm three not qualifiers. even sure which one I'll be tipping to win the race. But I think they're both very similar. Both very powerful. Get on the powerful, bunny. Nothing's yeah. picking them up. Um, you know, obviously, Sing Along Dolly was a finalist in the Shelburne Open 600. That shows you how strong she is. Of course, she won the Cesarowicz at Mullingar. It was only a two-run competition. But she got on the fun, bunny and she, she did the track record. You can't, you can't ask better than that. Uh, PL, is there anything in the heats? Obviously, it's 31 of them. Listen, even just one or two. It, it's, it's a case of, uh, for me, uh, largely the opening round this year will be a watching brief given the fact that there's limited experience around toaster and just see how dogs handle it how far forward they are for me the heat betting will really kick on sort of the second round but but probably not even properly to the third round um anything that you just want to highlight well uh, uh value in the first night or tonight uh will be sing along dolly um, I thought she she was pretty good three to one seven to two. I thought that was that was a fair price. I can just see her going crash claiming the rails and, and as you say, if she leaves, that'll be a good night and, and she could still fly down the back as well. So I think she's got a good makeup. So she'll be one of the, the better bets of the of the opening rounds. Um, I mean there's a lot of short ones, you know. The other Kobe as well, he, he could win about evens if you like uh, evens ten to eleven. I think I think he's uh, quite a straightforward bet. Um yeah, it's uh, I've done I mean, a lot of a lot of work, and I priced up uh, uh, 
the the cars myself and there's a few little bits and pieces of of uh of value here and there but that that kind of stood out for me i i'm i made a sort of a seven to four chance and as i say she's she's double that price so so that would that would be one that caught my eye well, that's fair enough. Um, for me, I, I, funny enough, if I am doing anything in the opening round, given the fact we're here on a on a betting exchange podcast, I, I think I'd be interested in laying a few of the shorties. Yeah. Um, just, you know, like the aforementioned Lynx Maverick, I just thought his heat was hot enough now that, you know, anything under two to one, I, I'd like to be like taking a little bit out of him. And one dog I do fancy in the opening round, and I quite fancy in the competition as well. Again, I have had a little nibble on him. A high trend at 11 to 10. Yes, he's taken on our great pal, the white flash, Balnabola Ed, but Ed hasn't run since Irish Derby final night back in September. And um, Pat is saying all the right things. The dog is hugely fast. We know how extremely and unbelievably talented it is. But High Trend is one of the most professional greyhounds in training. Um, never seems to miss the kick. His improvement for his first run to Toaster to his second run of Toaster was marked. Uh, again, finds another little bit of improvement from Trap 2. I thought he'd, without question, go round in front. He gets to that final bend, he kicks again. I just thought at odds against, he's around 11 to 10. I, I thought he was pretty solid. A Groucho's Duke, just worth a mention at a big price against Crafty Shivu. I am Crafty Shivu is just number one fan. She's six from six around Toaster. I think she's a sensational fast bitch. But Groucho's Duke is very talented. Um, noted fast starter at the back end of last year in Ireland. Lightly raced this year, but John Byrne tells me the dog is in great nick, great order. I know he did a flying trial in Ireland before coming over to Toaster. Did a good sprint trial. Just, I think he's six or seven to one. You know, I'd be willing to have a little nibble in him. Outside of them, I, I'm again watching brief, maybe at really short prices, may just take on King Memphis, but that's just the the inner sort of just just wanting to lay one or two to you nine. just want to lay all the you know, yeah, 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 you know, like, like what's what's the point in not losing a score if he wins, <laughs> you know, so be it. Um, but yeah, that that's the sort of way I'd be thinking. But no, great start to the Derby PL. You're going to be on duty every night of the Derby, yeah, you're, uh, you're going to be a busy man, yeah, and looking yeah, well, forward least, to it, mate. At least yeah. your hair's not going to turn gray. No, that's that's the good part. <laughs> you uh, you're going to put putting in the mileage. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm really looking forward to it. I think um, I think it's built building up nicely. Just hope all the issues are are behind us now. We can we can go through uh, the derby and really enjoy it because I think it is a, a really quality in depth as well. So um, may the best dog win. Absolutely. Without sounding patronising, I think it's really great that the English have a really strong challenge this year. Like in the last two to three years, I've been absolutely beating the drama. I'd be amazed if we didn't win it. Not so much this year. I think there is a very strong UK contingent. But as I said, I just think the sheer weight of numbers. Yes, it's what, 48 as opposed to 130 odd. But really, there's 80 of them you could take out of that 130 odd. And all of a sudden, it's 50 versus 50. And I think our 50 are quite a lot deeper than your 50 shall we say and we'll see we'll see of course i say your 50 says the man who's just tipped up four <laughs> irish exactly. dogs that's post book um, <laughs> paulo lawrence a pleasure as always ladies and gentlemen that's it for the opening um, matchbook betting exchange podcast for this year's uh, 2024 star sports trc english greyhound derby don't forget all markets will be online with matchbook there is a, a lively anti-post betting market there as we speak and if you bet with matchbook betting exchange in the last few moments before a race i promise you, you'll get much bigger prices than are available on track and indeed with the fixed odd bookmaker so stick with the exchanges as regards the uh, matchbook betting exchange going forward for the star sports trc english greyhound derby best of luck to anyone with a runner best of luck to anyone who's had a bet uh, remember to bet responsibly, but most importantly, enjoy what should be a wonderful competition. We'll be back next week, where hopefully, hopefully we'll be we'll be bragging about all our success and how our anti-post uh, uh, challengers have sailed through the opening round in tremendous fashion. But that's it from us this week. We'll see you next time.